Hello everyone, it's Benny, and in this video, we're going to be creating the core of our basic cobbled together physics engine, and that'll be in our physics engine class. Now, as before, I went ahead and created the header file and CPP file off screen just to save a bit of video time. So, let's go ahead and let's get started. Now, the big thing that our physics engine is going to need is a list of all the objects, well, that it's supposed to be simulating. So I'm going to include vector. So I'm going to be using the std vector for this. So we're going to have std vector, and it'll be of physics objects, or, well, physics object. And we're going to need to include that, so I'm going to include physics object.h. And actually, I'm going to swap the order these includes because of convention. But yeah, so its main data is it'll have an std vector of physics object, and this, I'm going to be calling this m objects, and that's all I'm going to have for now. So with that, I'm going to go ahead and write the prototypes for the functions we're going to have for this, or at least some of them. And the big one we're going to have is add physics object. Well, I'll just call add object. Why not? We're only going to be adding physics objects. And it's going to take in some physics object, object, and unsurprisingly, it's going to add it to our, phys our physics engine. Other than that, I'm going to have a function that I'm going to call void simulate. And this is going to take in some float delta. And this is just going to simulate the movement of all the objects in the physics engine. And that's just about all I'm going to have for now. So, with that, I'm going to go ahead and write a basic constructor and getters and such off screen. So, one moment. Okay, I went ahead and created the constructor of the physics engine off screen. In this case, it was ridiculously simple, but, well, I wanted to stay consistent with what I've been doing throughout the series. So, with that, let's go ahead and let's implement our two functions that we care about for the time being. So I'm going to go to physicsengine.cpp, which again, I created off-screen, and here are our two functions. So I'm going to go ahead and add braces to them, and make sure you add physics engine colon colon in front of them, so they're actually referring to the physics engine's version of these functions, and not just, well, normal functions with the same name. And, oh, I'm sorry, I made a slight error here. I want const physics object reference, because we're just going to be using this to copy into the physics object list. So, yeah, you can change that. So there. And anyways, so the add object function is going to be incredibly simple. It's just going to be m objects, push back, object, and voila! We have added the object to our list of objects. I know, hardest function of all time. So. Now the simulate function, it's also going to be pretty easy. I'm going to go through it in a for loop, and I'll just do a basic for loop, why not? So for unsigned at i equals 0, now it's going to be less than m objects. I believe it's size and for std vector. I forget, every programming language has a different construct for this, and they all have slightly different names for this, so... Sorry, get, get that slightly confused. But yeah, it's dot size. And for every object there, m objects sub i, if I can ever type it out, we're going to integrate it with delta. And that is our simulate function. That is all we need to get a basic physics engine up and running. So with that, I believe we have enough time left over to for me to go ahead and show you how we can hook this up to our, well, our 3D game engine, took it up to its rendering engine, so we can see our physics engine live and in action. Now, I think it's only fair that I warn you at this point that the rest of this video is going to be temporary code. Now, we will be implementing a proper physics engine integration system later on in the series. But for now, this is just something quick and dirty, so we can see our physics engine in action. So if you're okay with waiting and not seeing your physics engine in action until then, you are, f or if you're 
not using a specific game engine, then you're free to skip this part. If you do want to, however, well, the rest of the video is for you. So in order to properly and or, or not really properly, in order to do a quick and dirty integration, I've implemented some basic getters that, well, they're temporary. We're going to be getting rid of these later. But right now, they let us get an object from the physics engine, one of the objects in our big physics object list, and to get the total number of objects. So that's all that is. And I also went ahead and added some components to our the game engine so that we can actually add the physics engine and some physics objects to it. And I, as before, I went created the headers and CPPs files for this off-screen. Also, I created the getters for this off-screen, and I wrote a little bit more off-screen than I might usually would have, but I figured it's okay this time since it's temporary code. So, again, getters, constructor, done off-screen. I also included the things that, like the entity component, everything in the engine is an entity component. So, there's that. Physics engine component, obviously going to have physics engine as, as its data. So, yeah, this is a basic setup, and I figured it's really basic, so, well, might as well do it off screen. The only thing of remote interest here is this virtual void function update. And this is where we're going to update the physics engine. It's an overriding a function in entity component, and well, yeah. So let's go ahead and let's implement in physics engine.cpp. This is going to be conveniently incredibly easy. All we're going to have to do is a physics engine dot simulate delta. Done. That is everything we need to do with our physics, physics engine component. So when we update it, we just step the physics engine simulation by delta. Physics object. Actually, wait, did I do that right? Okay, for a second there I thought I named physics engine something different, but okay. A physics object component. Again, very simple. It's got basically just a wrapper for a physics object, except with the entity component extension or inheritance thing. And the only thing different from the on what I had done in physics engine component is I di don't have a getter for this. We're not going to need to get this. And as before, the really interesting stuff is going to happen in update. So, physics object component .cpp update. Let's implement. Actually, I'm going to go to, to entity component .h for a moment just to show you something. Now, the function we're really interested in here is this get transform, the one that gets us a mutable transform. We're going to use this, and we're going to modify the object's position based on the position of the physics object. That's all that's going to happen. Okay, so that's where this get transform function is coming from, and here are all the functions for it. As you see, there's a set position function, which is what we want. And here we're going to say mphysicsobject dot get position. So we're setting our trans. So yeah, we're setting the object's position to our physics object's position, and that's all we're going to do here. And well, that's really all we need to do here. Everything else is just going to be in main.cpp with our whole test games that scene. So in fact, I'm going to go ahead and do a little bit of modification to this off-screen. So, one moment. Okay. While I was setting things up off-screen, I realized I'd made a slight mistake in physics object component. I actually want to store a const physics object pointer, and not just a physics object. Why? This is supposed to be referring to some physics object in the physics engine. We don't want our own unique physics object, we want the physics object in the physics engine. So, we're using a pointer to point to that. And similarly, we're taking in a pointer rather than an object because, well, again, we're pointing to things. And yeah, I just changed that. So with that, let's go to main.cpp. Now, of course, I included physics engine component and physics object component. I made a few slight changes to our test scene, got rid of point light and spotlight, and also got rid of the terrain. Figured they're not needed here, so just go ahead and get rid of them. I left in the planes, though. I figured that's good for at least a point of reference. And also I got rid of the sphere and the square, because again, we don't really need those right now. So with that, here's our physics engine code. I create two objects, 
one at the origin with some velocity, another at some point in space with another velocity, add them to the engine, that's it. That's all the physics engine setup there is. All this stuff right here, well, this is just rendering, or setting up the physics engine for rendering. Now what this does is it takes, I create a physics engine component with the physics engine, of course, and then, one thing you got to be careful of here, in the way our temporary code works, the physics engine component gets its own copy of the physics engine. So we have to make sure we do everything with the physics engine component's copy of the physics engine. Otherwise, well, things won't work right because we're using the wrong physics engine. So, make sure you... So that's why, right here, I'm using physics engine component's physics engine number of objects. So going through every object in the physics engine component's physics engine... <laughs> Yeah, and as I was talking about before, I create a new object, and it's using a physics object component with a reference to the physics engine's object at that point. So yeah, this has is being updated to the physics object's position, which is what we want, and it also has a, a mesh render with a sphere, so it's rendering a sphere at the point that, well, the physics object's at. And that's what I'm doing for every object, so every object has a sphere rendered where it is. And finally, I add the physics engine component to the scene. I wrote all this out off screen because it's temporary code, not a huge deal. If you really care about it, it's on GitHub. So with that, let's build and run. And, well, as you see, there's one sphere right there moving through the plane. And there's the other sphere flying through space. And as you see, yeah, we have objects moving around in space. I'm not doing anything. The physics engine is doing this motion by itself. So, yeah, this isn't much, but hey, we got objects moving around and even casting shadows, which is kind of nice. And yeah, we we have physics engines simulating objects, causing them to move around in space and do stuff. And well, it's nice. It's not much, but it's definitely a start. So thank you. Hope you enjoyed. Hope you learned. And I'll see you in the next video, where we'll be expanding upon this framework a little bit and making our physics engine just a little bit more generally useful. So, thank you, hope you enjoyed, hope you learned, and I'll see you then.